Week three of the college football season is officially in the books. It was a pretty standard week for college football. You didn't have any major upsets, no big shocking games. But that being said, you still had some incredible games down to the wire. Georgia, Kentucky didn't have a lot of scoring, but that game was incredibly entertaining down the stretch. And then LSU, South Carolina really delivered an all-timer, really. Refs kind of screwed South Carolina a little bit on that one, but nonetheless, excellent game there. There were some really fun matchups, and today we are going to be talking about the players and teams that are going up in college football and the players and teams that are going down in college football. If you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment and let me know who you guys have as the big winners of the weekend. On top of that, be sure to sign up for Underdog Fantasy using my code JWAX to get double your initial deposit. And check out my Patreon page. On my Patreon, I've got my full college football NFL draft guide with over 400 prospects on there that have full prospect evaluations and eval evaluations as well. I've got all the information that you guys could want over there. And we're going to be adding some stuff over there, including weekly college football game picks starting this week. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to go check that out. It's only $5 a month. But let's go ahead and get right into it, starting with who I believe was the biggest winner of the week. And that is going to be Alabama's quarterback, Jalen Milrow. Milrow had himself a heck of a performance today against Wisconsin. You looked at kind of the games that he had over the last couple of weeks. He was okay in the season opener. He was pretty good against USF down the stretch. That team really struggled defensively, which is kind of where their woes came in. But he had two rushing and two passing touchdowns in each of the first two games. He looked dynamic. He showed some inconsistencies here and there. But now against his best opponent, a Wisconsin team that was really solid on the defensive side of the football, they have a really dynamic offense in that air raid system. Jalen Milrow had himself a performance showed off the deep ball accuracy, which is incredibly improved. He showed some incredible touch on some of these passes that he was making, fitting them into tight windows, just throwing them on a string into the positions that only the receivers were going to be able to get. We know Milrow is a dynamic athlete, but I think it kind of goes under the radar still. He has some of the best pocket feel of any quarterback in this draft class. He can feel pressure really coming from all angles, and he has the ability to step up buy time, keep his eyes downfield. Milrow is a special athlete at the quarterback position. And if he could clean up that arm stuff, if he could be a little bit more accurate down the field, if he could find these receivers deep, continue to buy time, he is going to be a first round pick. And I know people don't want to hear that. He has all the tools that you look for. A great arm, great pocket presence. He's really athletic. He is going to be a one of those guys that is going to continue to fly up draft boards if he continues playing like this. Alabama looked really, really good today, and it's because you've got a quarterback like Jalen Milrow at the helm. He looked absolutely incredible. He looked like a first-round pick. I am super excited for what he's got coming for him the next few weeks because the schedule does get tougher, but we've seen him show up in the big moment for Alabama, and I think he is a huge winner of this weekend. The big loser for me this weekend has to be the Georgia Bulldogs. And I know they won the game 13-12 on the road at Kentucky. This is a Kentucky team that got absolutely embarrassed last week against a South Carolina team that looks better than we thought they did, admittedly. We'll get to them in a little bit. But Georgia just looked completely out of sorts. And if it wasn't for Oscar Delp fumbling the ball and it getting recovered at the first down, I'm not so sure that Georgia wins this game. Defensively, they had their struggles, and it was really interesting when you watched this game. They couldn't really stop the run. This was a heavy RPO system that Kentucky was running, and it seemed like every single play, Kentucky's getting four or five yards per carry because they just had no answers. Now, when they were forced to drop back, I thought the secondary did a really, really good job at playing back, making things happen, and I liked what we saw from the secondary, but – I'm not too concerned about the defense. What I'm mostly concerned about was the offense because this is a front four that was in the face of Carson Beck all night. We know Deion Walker is a first-round pick. He was absolutely outstanding tonight. But really where you had your problems with this team, and the offensive line struggled. I know Tate Ratledge went out, but Ernest Green didn't look good. And this is the first game that I watched. And I'm like, 
are we sure Carson Beck is the top quarterback in the class? He still has only one loss in his collegiate career. And in the final moments of this game, he made some plays and he helped get the ball down the field. But he looked completely out of sorts, bobbling the snaps, fumbling the football in key situations. He just looked like he felt rushed, which I hadn't really seen from him at any point this year. It was a really interesting game. They couldn't run the ball very effectively. And I don't really think they had any true elite weapons. I like Colby Young. I think Dylan Bell's a good player. But none of these guys are elite players to me for Georgia. This is the game that I think if we look back on later in the season, this is kind of the game where I think Georgia might have been figured out. Now, they'll probably go on, finish in the the top five, and be a college football playoff team. I get that. But this was a very concerning game from Georgia and one that I don't want to write off. And I think they were a big loser. Despite the win, they're going to drop in the top 25 polls. They're not the number one team. I think there's a lot of cause for concern down in Athens. The next big winner for me is Raheem Rocket Sanders from South Carolina. I do just want to spend a little bit of time talking about South Carolina because I thought they were going to be a top 25 team after this week. They looked phenomenal for three three quarters in this game. Honestly, they looked phenomenal for four quarters. I'm not, they looked really good in this game. Coaching decisions down the stretch really cost them, but this defensive front was absolutely incredible. TJ Sanders was a my guy in this class coming into the season. He has played up to it. He's been incredible. Tonka Hemingway made some plays in the run game. Dylan Stewart is one of the freakiest athletes I have ever seen off the edge. His bend around the offensive tackle. They were playing against two of the best tackles in college football today in Will Campbell and Emory Jones, and it looked like no problem. And then Kyle Kennard, I wanted to have him in the winners, and then the way his fourth quarter went ended up falling out because he had the illegal block that was not an illegal block. And then he also had a really bad, I believe it was roughing the passer penalty on like a third and five or something like that. That kind of gave life to LSU. They went down, scored a touchdown. This was a really fun South Carolina team, a team I thought was going to be at the bottom of the conference. They, They were a winner from the week despite losing to LSU. But back to Rocket Sanders, this is a player that had a really up and down time at Arkansas. The 2023 season was not ideal from him. They really ran the ball a lot with KJ Jefferson. Sanders was dealing with some injuries. Slimmed down this year for South Carolina. That was one of the most puzzling moves of the transfer portal when he did go to South Carolina. He had himself a day. I want to say he had 143 yards, had a couple of touchdowns, made plays happen in the receiving game, made plays happen on the ground, and he needed to be special for this team today. Once Lenora Sellers went down, he needed to step up, and he certainly did. He was one of my favorite running backs last year if he would have come out. I think he's got incredible explosiveness. He runs with good power. But now that he's slimmed down, you see some of that elusiveness, his ability to bounce plays to the outside, has really good jukes and cuts. I really like Rocket Sanders. I was really impressed with the game he had today and a big winner for me. I think a lot that South Carolina team as a whole was absolutely fantastic. Jared Brown had a good game. Raheem Sanders had a good game. The defense was incredible but Raheem Sanders was the player that I decided to highlight. The next loser of the week for me are going to be, it's Billy Napier. He's gone. He is absolutely going to be out of Gainesville tomorrow. Now I am recording this at 1114 PM central time. So he very well might be fired by the time I upload this video. Absolutely embarrassing, embarrassing performance against a Texas A&M team that was out there starting quarterback. This is a Florida team that we knew had the hardest schedule in college football. We heard about it all summer long. Florida State, one of the hardest te- or Florida, one of the hardest schedules in the country. And they have looked lifeless through three weeks. They coaching decisions got to be a little bit questionable. As a Graham Mertz truther, you got to go with DJ Lagway. He looked really solid last week. Why aren't you starting him? I know you're playing two quarterbacks. Don't make things confusing for your team. The in-game adjustments are poor. He has absolutely zero control over that locker room and just an absolute embarrassment. There's a Texas A&M team that hasn't looked particularly explosive or good, and he had no answers for them against their backup quarterback. I don't really know what you expect. I think he is going to be gone out of Gainesville. I would be shocked if he gets another head coaching gig because this has been an absolute disaster for him in Florida. I think he's a massive loser of the weekend, and I don't really see anybody making any excuses for him anymore. They're one and two. 
They had been absolutely embarrassed in two of their first three games on national television. And I think Florida is, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if we see DJ Lagway hit the portal after this year, because this is a Florida team that really seems to have absolutely no control over the locker room. And it's just a mess down there. And I think that Billy Napier is a massive loser of the weekend. Another winner for me, we've got Savon Ravel. I don't want to get too crazy here because if you guys have followed the channel, Savon Ravel came in as my number four corner in the class. He was on that same tier as a corner as Travis Hunter. I think Ravel is fantastic. 6'4", 185, can play zone. One of the best tackling corners you're going to see. This guy is so damn good. And every single week seems like he's making plays. I mean, I don't even know what's too crazy to say. I wouldn't be shocked if he's the number one corner in the class at this point. And yes, that is with Will Johnson in this group. Savon Ravel is so special at the cornerback position. He, we, I will have a prospect spotlight on him next week. Don't worry. He's coming very soon. I, I mean, I'm just impressed more the more I watch this guy. The ball skills are phenomenal. He has such fluid hips, quick motions. His reaction time to the football is absolutely elite. We mentioned he is one of the most sound technical tacklers from the cornerback position. And he's not even a primarily press corner, but he does that so well. I, I mean, it's very, very difficult to find a weakness in Savon Ravel's game. He is so special, had a pick six tonight against App State. I believe it was App State. Um, East Carolina has never had a top 20 pick in program history. Savon Ravel will be the first. I, I would put all my money on the, him being a first round pick. There's so much to love about this guy. And I mean, we knew if you guys followed the channel, you knew I was a big fan of him. I just wanted another excuse to talk about him because he is one of my favorite corners I have ever evaluated. And he was a big winner of the week. I, I think I am going to put him. I think he is in that same tier now as Travis Hunter, Ben Morrison and Will Johnson. I think all those guys make a strong case for the number one corner in this draft class. Going back to the coaching tree, I think Mike Norvell could be fired as well. This is a Florida State team that, ooh, I mean, I don't really even know where to begin with this Florida State team and get embarrassed on against the season opener against Georgia Tech where this offense just looks brutal. DJ Uyagalale has zero control over where he's throwing the football at any given time. It could go five yards from him. It could go 25 yards. He has poor accuracy, which I was something I saw so much from him at Oregon State. He came over with them to Florida State. I think we underrated how many pieces this Florida State team lost. I know that was the big talk. Oh, they lost these pieces, but they made moves. This team was decimated. And now that the Seminoles team, I think Florida State and Michigan have the two worst quarterback rooms and maybe all of the FBS and I'm not exaggerating right now. Florida State continues to stick by DJ Uyaglale when he is heaving the ball into triple coverage. What are you doing? It's just poor decision making after poor decision making. My big issue right now with the Florida State team, they've had success running the football. They haven't done enough running because they've been playing from behind. Roy Dell Williams had a touchdown in this game. Lawrence Toafili has showed some, some stuff here and there. Run the ball. Run the football. I have said this for the last two weeks about Florida State. Run the freaking football. If you got a guy that can make a play, take the ball out of your liability of a quarterback's hand. And I think that's where Mike Norvell's at fault. He has made no adjustments. He is sticking by DJ when this has been an absolute disaster. And now you are 0-3 and you lost to the team that you left. It's just a complete disaster right now down in Tallahassee. I mean, how many more games do we allow this to happen? This is the second time in five years that Florida State has finished or started the season 0-3. It doesn't happen for this Florida State team. And I know, oh, they went 12-0 last year. Who cares? They didn't even win a bowl game. Why are we still talking about this? This Florida State team is one of the worst programs in the FBS right now. And it's a complete disaster what they've got going on. And I, I mean, I was, I've been into the hype train. I had them going to the college football playoff and this team is an absolute mess. And I wouldn't be shocked if Mike Norvell is out the door tomorrow. 
Another winner for the week is going to be the Washington State Cougars. Really fun team in Washington State. Uh, obviously, with the Pac-12 dismantling this offseason, there were a lot of concerns about who was going to be in there. Obviously, they made some moves this past week. I just did a video on the teams that I think should be added, so be sure to go check that out. But Washington State had one of the worst portals I felt like in the country. You lost Cam Ward. You really didn't bring in a ton of other talent and hasn't really mattered. I think they are flirting with a top 25 ranking. I think in my rankings, they would have come in at number 28. So they're really on the fringe uh, of the top 25. But this is a team that go in, beat Washington, win the Apple Cup. They are now 3-0. And when you look at their schedule, this is a team that very well could win 10, 11 games. They really don't have many tough games on the schedule. You got Fresno State. You got Boise State. Both of those feel very winnable. This is a Washington State program that is having some success. I love to see it. I think there's a great win for this team. I want to show some love. They win the Apple Cup. That's a big rivalry in the state of Washington. And a good win for the Cougars. I got them on the up this week. Another loser for me is the Arizona Wildcats. And man, Boy, was I wrong about this Arizona team. This team is one of the roughest watches I think I've seen all year. I love Noah Fafita. A big fan. Go check out my interview with him on my Patreon. Um, this Arizona team is, their offense has taken a massive step back this year. And it's really interesting because I don't think Fafita's having a bad year. I think he's doing a good job. Tetsuro McMillan is playing out of his mind. But this is an Arizona team that in week one, they were in a close game that they should not have been in. I believe it was San Diego State that they played. Should not have been a close game. They couldn't really finish. They ended up winning the game. Northern Arizona, an FCS school, barely beat them in week two. And then they get absolutely embarrassed week three against Kansas State, who, and I'm not even the highest on Kansas State. Arizona, I think on paper, is a better team than them. I thought Arizona was going to win that football game. And this team just has no creativity in their play calling. There's really no movement in the run game. Fafita doesn't seem like he's comfortable in this offense right now. Granted, new head coach, I get it. But it seems like a big mess right now for the Arizona Wildcats. And a team that I thought had a real chance to win the Big 12. You look at some of these other teams. Kansas State is playing really well. Utah is playing really well. Oklahoma State had a big win today against uh, Tulsa. Arizona doesn't really feel like they're in that upper echelon of teams right now. And I do have some concerns about this team moving forward. Uh, they have dropped out of the top 25 because, I mean, I flirted with dropping them out last week. Uh, I don't really see any excuses for having them still in there. And just an ugly loss for Arizona. And I got them as a big loser of the weekend. Another winner for me, it's going to be Pat Bryant, the wide receiver from Illinois a player that has on my on my watch list. I haven't studied his film yet, but when you look at the numbers, he's having just as good of a college football season as anybody in the country right now. He's playing incredibly well. Had a few catches, two touchdowns in this game, over 100 yards, and an Illinois team that is quietly one of the better teams in the Big Ten right now. They're playing incredibly well football. 3-0, going to play Nebraska next week, which I think is must-see TV. Illinois playing really good. Luke Altmeyer, that offensive line, doing a heck of a job. And then Pat Bryant, who continues to feast in this offense, just mentioned two touchdowns in the game today. I am blanking on who they played, but really solid win for Illinois. And I think Pat Bryant has been a big part of their offense, a player that has definitely caught my attention early on in the college football season. Wanted to highlight him a little bit. He is a winner of the week for me. Another loser for me, it's going to be West Virginia. They're one and two. This was another sleeper team of mine in the Big 12. I was like, Garrett Green's coming back. They got an explosive run game with C.J. Donaldson, and you got Jaheim White, and you got Wyatt Millam on that O-line, and you got some defensive players I like. And, I mean, they were up, I believe, 10 points with four minutes to go, completely below the lead in the backyard brawl. Pitt has a huge comeback. Well, Eli Holston was incredible down the stretch for them. Pitt ends up getting the win, but the West Virginia team, that's really interesting. They looked really bad against Penn state. I get it. Penn state week two, you pull off a good win. And then this game, I'm not the highest on Pitt. I don't think they're a great football team. You got to be able to finish games. And that just isn't something that we have been able to see from West Virginia. 
I think there's some concerns on the offensive line, but overall, just a bit of a disappointing season for the Mountaineers, a team that I think had high hopes, and you haven't even gotten into conference play and you're one and two. They Their college football playoff hopes are probably done after today. I think that was a really unfortunate loss for the Mountaineers and one of the big losers of the week again. A winner again, it's going to be Curtis Rourke out of Indiana. Indiana is one of these teams that I think is going to end up in the top 25 at some point this year. If you look at their first three weeks, they have been absolutely incredible through the first three games. First Big Ten opponent tonight, UCLA, no problem for Indiana. They had a really great game. And uh, Rourke has been a really good player for this team. He's been accurate with the football. Transfer from Ohio that has been really good in terms of decision-making. This is an Indiana team, new head coach, new quarterback. They had some weapons that returned, and they brought in some pieces. And this has been a really good offense early on. And uh, I don't want to say they could be – I mean – I think this team could beat Michigan. I, I do. I think there's a good football team right now that is playing some good football. Um, I think with a established quarterback like Curtis Rourke, they've looked really good. He's a player that I watched a little bit at Ohio. Going to do some reevaluating of him at, coming up because what we've seen from him at Indiana has been pretty impressive, and he's a big winner of the weekend for me as well. And then we're going to get into the final loser, and that is going to be the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The SEC play, they haven't gotten there. I mean, this is a, this is a team that I wasn't particularly high on in the SEC, but you're playing Toledo. You lose by double digits to Toledo. Yeah, that, that's not going to fly. Toledo's a good football team, but Mississippi State really struggles in this game. Couldn't really get any offense going. Th- you're losing to a Mac school that is notorious for not having good offenses. Just a rough one for the Bulldogs and some SEC Bulldogs. Two Bulldogs in the SEC end up making the losers list of the week. So you, you hate to see it, but Mississippi State, loser of the week for me. Getting into it now, we're going to talk about my new Heisman rankings. Nothing really changes. Jackson Dart drops out of the top five, and it's not really for anything he did wrong. I think Jalen Milrow just had that good of a week, and Milrow jumps up from number seven to number two. Um, incredible game from him. Cam Ward remains at the top, though. Had five touchdowns, 350 yards. I mean, he looks like the best quarterback in college football right now. I mean, I'm flirting with the idea more and more of him being the number one quarterback because Miami is back, and Cam Ward looks absolutely phenomenal. We mentioned Jalen Milrow. Quinn Ewers remains towards the top. Went out of this game again with an abdominal strain. I'm not too worried about it, but definitely something to keep an eye on. He stays at three. Miller Moss and Ashton Genty both stay at number four and number five. Neither of them played today, but they're playing good football. Travis Hunter is the player, though, that I really wanted to put in here because he had another incredible game. Two touchdowns, had an interception. Colorado has an incredible win against Colorado State that I wanted to put Colorado as a winner because, I mean, after what we saw from Nebraska, I kind of wrote this team off. I think Colorado's still a sneaky good football team. They played really well in the trenches today. When you got when you can protect Shadur Sanders, this team can win football games. They did that today, and I think they got a real chance to continue to win some games. But Travis Hunter, I mean, you could put him in number two. You could put him at number six. That's kind of the range for him is a loaded – Heisman race right now. All I know right now, I think Cam Ward is the top dog and should be the favorite to win the Heisman at this moment. Getting into the teams that have fallen out of the top 25 to Arizona, we talked about, and then Boston College got in as the number 24 team, beat a Florida State team that now when you look at it, they don't look particularly good. And then they they had a good win in week two. End up losing to a Missouri team that is a really good football team, but they end up falling out. I like the way this slide turned it out. ABC thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, Boston College was sitting at my number 24 spot. They drop out of the top 25. Arizona was sitting at number 20, and they have fallen out. So let's take a look. There was some shakeup in the top 25. Let's get into it. We got a new team at my number one. That is going to be the Texas Longhorns. I mean, Texas is back right now. We talked about Quinn Ewers going out of that game. Arch Manning comes in. He plays incredible. Isaiah Bond looks – 
I mean, I loved Isaiah Bond coming into the year. He looks increasingly awesome. Uh, Ohio State didn't play today. Ole Miss stays at number three for me. Had a good win against Wake Forest. Um, I, I didn't think Jackson Dart had an incredible game, but he still threw for almost 400 yards. Uh, Alabama jumps up. Great game against a good Big Ten opponent there at Wisconsin. I thought the defense was really good. Deontay Lawson made some incredible plays. Um, love that we saw. Miami is a top five team in college football for me right now. I think this team is dominant on both sides of the ball. Tyler Barron's playing great. The offense looks awesome. I got them at five. And then Georgia falls to number six. We talked about it. I, I just don't see how they're a top five team after what we saw tonight and looking at the dominance that those five teams ahead of them have had. Tennessee jumps up ahead of Utah. They pretty much swap. Utah drops down to nine, and it actually has nothing to do with anything they have done. And more so, I think I was too high on Utah. I thought they were – they kind of let Utah State hang around a little bit too much. Good team. I, I got them in the top ten still, but they're at nine. Tennessee, though, this offense is explosive. Nico Yamaliava is out of his mind right now. He's probably number eight for the Heisman, and you can make a case he's the favorite. He's looked incredible. Penn State, they didn't play. Neither did USC, so they stay where they're at. Missouri, they stay at number 11. Good win against Boston College. I just can't get into the top 10 hype for them. I think they're fine, but they showed some weakness in that game. Kansas State remains the same after a really good win. Good performance from Dylan Edwards in that one. Oregon jumps up, up one spot for me. Uh, good win against Oregon State. I think that was the most balanced performance we've seen from Oregon all year. Dylan Gabriel had a great game. We saw some good stuff from them. I like that one. And then Nebraska. I know people don't want to hear this. Nebraska is a top 15 team for me right now. I love what Dylan Raiola is doing. This defense is physical. They're nasty. They're finding ways to win football games. And I got them sitting at my number 14 spot. Just ahead of Oklahoma. Oklahoma and Tennessee next week is going to be incredible football to watch. Um, I like what we've seen from Oklahoma so far. I think they're playing solid. Um, nothing that I'm like overwhelmed by. Good win today against Tulane, though. And then LSU drops for me. I had them sitting at number 13. They end up falling down to number 16. Good win, but the defense has to get it under control. They have not been disciplined, and they couldn't stop the run attack of South Carolina. Oklahoma State, good win today. Stay the same. We didn't see Louisville or Iowa State today. They remain where they're at. And then Michigan comes up from number 25 to number 20. Good win against Arkansas State. I'm glad that we finally get Alex Orgy. I think that was the right decision. Uh, Davis Warren has been an absolute disaster. Notre Dame dominated against Purdue. They stay at number 21, though. I still don't trust them. Uh, Purdue is fine. I don't think that was a game that I was too worried about. Syracuse, Clemson, neither of them played, but the two new teams in the top 25 for me. Illinois, we talked about it a little bit, but there's a team that has looked really good so far, had some really solid wins. I think they're playing good football. They were the most voted for team that didn't make it last week in the AP poll. I think they'll get in this week. They're 3-0, and and they are looking fantastic. And then Memphis, the first group of five team that has gotten in the mix Good win today against Florida State. They're 3-0. The offense looks great. Seth Hennigan is one of my favorite sleepers down the board in the quarterback class. The defense played well, and that is the new look, top 25. UNLV, I considered putting them in there. I considered putting TCU in there. There were quite a few teams that were kind of in the mix. South Carolina would have probably come in and that into like that 20 range if they had beat LSU. Unfortunately, they lost, but... That's kind of where my top 25 sits after this week. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. That's going to do it for me in this one, though. Leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.